Hey everybody, it's Emily, the Crazy Worm Lady. I'm here today with the Worm Factory 360 for an update. I know my plan was to harvest this top tray, but plans changed. I was asked to ship someone some blue worms, and this bin is primarily blue worms. So I'm actually going to keep this top tray just the way it is. I might actually dump it in the tray beneath and make this top tray a very heavily fed tray so that I can harvest some worms out of it in about a week to ship. So um, I'm going to take this layer off. We'll look at the layer below and we'll decide if we're going to dump this in the tray below or what exactly we're going to do. But I will say today they're going to get a really large feeding. So I decided to do this in reverse order and I went all the way down to my sump. And this is the worm ladder and this is why the worm factory can be frustrating. The bottom is supposed to be able to be a safe space for anything to drain off the tap if it would get too moist. But worms and compost all fall down here. Got a lot of springtails as well. And it can be a little frustrating for people because they this is not what they expect their worm factory to do. So I'm gonna take this compost out of here. We'll put on our bottom layer, take a look at that one, and then work our way back up to our feeding tray that we're going to feed real heavily so we can harvest. It is important to periodically check down in the sump area because like this one, it was very well kind of filled with compost and that's reducing the amount of airflow you can get out of the little tap that you keep open. I have mine, has a little paper towel on it beneath here, but I've never really had drainage except for one time I fed too much watermelon, but there also is air that's able to come up through that. So one thing I do is I leave a little bit of cardboard, shredded cardboard in the base, just in case the worms make their way down there. There is a little bit of a living space and something for them to eat. But um, this is kind of my, why the worm factory frustrates me. It just doesn't really work the way, you know, you, you think when you see the pretty pictures in the pamphlet or the, um, the advertisement, but this is the way I found to make it work. So this is our very bottom tray, the one that we're supposed to be able to harvest at any time we want. But look at the number of worms. And that's why when I'm ready to harvest, I rotate my bottom tray to the top to let the worms migrate down to the tray that I'm feeding. Sounds kind of complicated, but the, the advertisement makes you think that Every time you add a new tray, the worms are all going to move up and there's going to be nothing but castings left behind. But the worms just love hanging out in the bottom. So I found this kind of reverse method to try to get the worms to migrate out of the finished compost works a bit better for me. So we're going to go up to our feeding tray, see what's going on in there. And then I think I'm going to dump that the compost from the tray I was harvesting from into that tray and we'll start that one brand new filled chock full of food so hopefully next week I can harvest some worms to fill the order that I received. So I added some shredded bedding to my bottom tray simply because it's quite moist. That's another problem. The advertisement doesn't take into account that this design idea is great but worms also follow moisture and moisture always moves down. So since I'm going to be giving a really large feeding two trays up I want to make sure there's plenty of dry bedding between so that it doesn't get muddy down here and so that the worms are able to process up top, move their way up without this becoming sludge in the bottom. So here's our active feeding tray. This tray is much more flaky, friable. Honestly, there's less worms in this tray, I think, than in the tray below, which I just think is funny because the tray below is supposed to be the one that's done. Some of these non-compostable tea bags, I was disappointed that the Packaging is not able to compost, but the tea does seem to break down. The worms are able to eat, eat that at least. But this tray is, is looking nice, but I would hope more of the worms would be here where we most recently fed, and they are not. So let me dump the contents of that top tray, which was our harvest tray that we were trying to get worms to move out of. I'm going to move that in here and then encourage all of them to move up to a brand new feeding tray. Okay, so everything is dumped into this top tray. Um, I put another really, you know, not a thick layer, but I put a layer of some more 
dry cardboard so that this top tray that I'm going to put on right now, we can feed really aggressively, very moist, and we won't have to worry about everything getting too wet down below. So hopefully the worms will move up to the sweet food, all the microbes will get working very fast, and I'll be able to send out those worms. Um, but this is kind of the issue, is the worms kind of move between trays not always the way you expect. So you kind of have to play around with it to see what works for you. And I, I was actually having good success with that top tray, trying to get the worms to move out to get that compost. And then I had to switch up and change plans. But I always like to kind of show you guys what I'm doing and explain why. So I'm going to put that top tray back on and we will finally get this fed up. And hopefully next week I'll have lots of worms to harvest and collect for my friend. All right, so most of that compost was dumped into the tray below, but I did leave a small thin layer because that will have the microbial life already going, hopefully encouraging the worms to move up a bit faster. And I'm gonna put a very healthy amount of dry cardboard again. When you're feeding a system like this, you really wanna err on the side of it being a little bit more dry because if it gets too wet, it can just be very hard to manage and to get the compost to the consistency you like. So I always try to keep it a bit drier than my other systems because it just seems to work better under that compressed condition that it gets as the trays stack up and there's a lot of weight on top. So that's corner to corner, maybe about an inch of bedding. I'm gonna add some of my dry mix which has the neem cake, kelp meal, diatomaceous earth, and oyster shell. Always wanna have this, has some grit, some bug control, trace minerals, kind of all the stuff that we want for our compost and for our worms. And now, time for the big feeding. All right guys, I wasn't joking when I said it was a huge feeding. I actually have a large grocery bag my friend put scraps directly into. This is frozen. Another reason why that layer of dry cardboard is helpful, it will keep the worms from being bothered by this as it cools off and starts to break down. But these are all foods that are very high in moisture, and that's another reason why you want a lot of bedding. Um, you know, people, I think their biggest mistake sometimes is overfeeding and not having enough carbon sources. You can see this has some of our forbidden type foods. Oh my gosh, the amount of bananas. These worms are going to be in heaven. Sweet potato peels. These are all things that worms really like. Sometimes things that people don't think worms should have, but all of my worms seem to do really well. There are some labels on a lot of these food items, but I have that a lot, and I just peel them out of the finished compost later. But, as you can see, that's corner to corner food. Since this tray is several, um, or the system rather, is several trays deep, I don't worry about it getting um, heating up too much because the worms can wait down below and then once the heat from the beginning of the decomposition kind of lightens up and it's more conducive, they'll move in. I kind of doubt it would get that hot, but in case it is, I, I don't worry when there's plenty of space beneath this tray. So the final thing I'm gonna do is top this all off with tons of shredded cardboard and we'll call it a day. So the bedding is mounded up on top here. I think this is gonna be great. It's not really a problem that you put a lot of dry bedding on top of your feedings because any condensation can be absorbed by this, but the worms aren't gonna be working through this very top bit right now. This just kind of works as some insulation um, and protection against any sort of fruit flies and things like that since this is not a sealed system. There are little gaps between the trays where air and you know bugs could get in if they wanted to. So for me, really mounding up the bedding is probably a really good practice to prevent anything like that. So I'm just going to slap the lid back on here and leave this for a week. And I will bring you guys back next week because I'm sure it will be very exciting to see what the worms are doing. So let me know what you think. Drop your comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to follow my experiments on all my worm bins. And I'll talk to you guys real soon.